We're here at EAA Adventure Oshkosh, back down in the ultralight area, my favorite area of this show. I think it's where all the charm happens, and indeed, we're going to look at something that's pretty darn charming, I think. I'm Dan Johnson, talking to Eric Wallner, who first flew this Easy Riser here. Well, why don't you give me some of the history of this particular airplane at this particular show, Eric? Well, uh, this is this is 2017, and the last time I brought this uh, this plane here was in uh, 1992. That would make it 25 <laughs> years ago. 25 year celebration. Yep. But you had it before then too. I did. I built it in 1986, which is 31 years ago at this point, and uh, and flew it flew for quite a while until um, about 1996. So just only about four more years after 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 it appeared here at the air show, it was put in mothballs for better part of two decades. Is that right? This particular aircraft again? This one. So let's go back then. When okay. did you first acquire it? I first um, built it uh, in 1986. I lived in the shop where, <laughs> where, where I built it. It took four months. A friend of mine is a merchant marine and he let me use his shop while he was away at sea. And I just moved right in. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I had, a, had a cot and I slept in there and ate my meals. And I thought only about this plane. Wow, that is some serious dedication. Uh, yep. There's some wives that probably wish their husbands would do some of that, but anyway, good for you. There's so, probably some husbands who wish they could do yeah, it. Yeah, I'm sure of that as well. So uh, I'm looking at the airplane now, and, and yep. you had a little document that you've uh, got on the wing for people to know so that you don't have to answer every question, uh -huh. but it sounds like this one's been through a considerable renewal, and indeed it looks different than some of the easy risers I saw back at the beginning of my career when this first came out. Yep, well, that's, a, that's, that, that's an interesting point. Um, as you see the wing, is how I built it. This covering job that looks so 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 intact is 31 years old. This is old. the original covering this on it. The original covering ah, well, on it. It, yeah. it looks that good that I thought yeah, you yeah. must have recovered as yeah. well. But you did make some changes to the aircraft, didn't you, Eric? I I made some changes to to the original kit when I was building it. Ah, this, okay. This, this plane is actually the fourth, and what and what um, unbeknownst to myself and the owner of the company, Larry Meyer, out in California. We didn't realize that this was going to be essentially the last generation of the Easy Riser because um, the Easy Riser had kind of run its run its course. Uh, 2,500 kits sold, but this this plane um, was intended to be the next generation. I made about 15 changes to uh, to the standard Easy Riser kit um, to come up with this plane. So there's there's a whole number of things like these 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 teardrop um, uh, right. form, form struts. Larry made. Uh, specifically for this plane, and as far as I know, this may actually be the only one that has these tubes. I had to, I had to borrow a friend's lathe and make the make the um, the tube connector at the ends of it. Is but, that right? The, the little black fitting I'm seeing up here. Yep. And the, Is the, that right? And the, wow. and, the, and, the, and the little cylinder that that's that's aluminum. It's milled down. It only goes down about so far. Okay. And three pop rivets, three heavy-duty stainless pop rivets hold it in on each side. And each strut is three inches shorter from a standard Easy Riser. Um, there's less dihedral, one third less dihedral. One third less. One third okay. less. And yeah, the, the early ones. I mean, I'm not going to tell you that I remember the angles. That would be yeah. stretching my memory. But they always seem to have a lot of dihedral to me. Correct. And I don't notice it so much on this. Whether I really remember that or it just looks different to me, I don't know. But yep, yep, yep. So basically, this is all those changes that you referred to in your uh, document on the wing were made a long time ago, yeah, and yet it has spinning. survived and looks this good. Yeah, remarkable, isn't it? Do you keep it in refrigerated storage or something? How does it look so good after all that time? Well, I, I have a, a box on a trailer. It's a, it's a 16 feet long by four feet wide by, by two and a half feet thick. I remember seeing those on the back of uh, trailers and whatnot. Yep, and, and it's been living in there. It, it, it lived in there for for 18, 19 years. <laughs> and it's gonna go back in there after, after, after the show to be transported back to the airport. And where's where's home base for you, Eric? Well, um, I live in southwest Wisconsin, Dodgeville. Okay. And uh, I've hangered in two airports, the Lone Rock uh, Airport, which is uh, Tri-County Airport, it's actually called, and in Mineral Point, which is the, the, the Iowa County Airport, our, our main Oh, our okay, because you're that close to the border, I get it. Yeah, exactly. All right, so it's not too long a trip home for you then. Right. You've done some uh, flying in this aircraft over the years. Uh, tell me a little bit of the stories of flying it and how it flies. And okay, well, this, you... this plane, I, I, I used to foot launch before. and you I did? have, And mm -hmm. I, I, I had a, a, I put 125 hours or so on it as a foot launched machine. Is that right? 125, and I've only, with the, with the addition of the landing gear and this new 
jewel of a, of, of a power pack out of, out of Austria meant for paramotors, meant for paragliders to, 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 to power them. Um, the landing gear and those two things were only added last summer. In, in, oh, is that right? Okay. 2016. So, so this little center part of the airplane is rather new then. Exactly. And exactly. what engine are you using back there, Eric? It's, uh, it's made by a company, I think it's called Sunflight. It's known as the EOS 100. It's 100 cc's. Um, it's How much power? It's an amazing little little engine because first off, it weighs 23 pow pounds <laughs> with the rubber mounts, the engine, the exhaust. Oh, really? With the all propeller, that? everything, 23 pounds. It's wow. 20 and a half horsepower, and the most amazing thing of, of all is it puts out just a little bit more than 125 pounds of thrust. If you consider a Cessna 150 has right. 200 pounds of thrust, and this is only a 120 pound aircraft. Yeah, aircraft, right, right. You know. Is that what the weight empty as it sits right here right now, not including fuel, 120 pounds? 121, actually. Well, you, you do slide underneath that 254-pound barrier fairly easily. Then I could stack another <laughs> on top, and I'd still be under. <laughs> you could have a quad plane and still make 103. Right. Beautiful. That's wonderful. Isn't that amazing? It is really. I, I mean, I knew that because I'm an old hang glider pilot. Ah. I saw these being flown just as hang gliders. There was no talk about powering them until John Moody came along and went, "Hey, I've got an idea." Yep. Yep, and I, I saw was, him at a hang gliding meet years ago when he was first flying it, and everybody kind of went, uh, that's pretty weird, and shortly afterward, it became part of the aviation spectrum. Isn't that something? I was actually John Moody's 17th customer. 17th, really? In 1977. Now, I was going to say, we're back into the 70s with that story yeah. then. So, so 2017 marks 40 years since I, since I plunked my... My first third down, which was five hundred and twenty dollars. One third of the One cost was five hundred dollars. Think about that, folks. Here in yep. twenty seventeen. Yep. So, so I plunked my five hundred dollars down on it. It was, I came to Oshkosh in, nineteen ninety seven. I just graduated from high school, a couple months before. I came here with my uncle Hank. Was building a BD five in oh, his garage, right? <laughs> and and I was just riveted to this. I, I happened to, have a curious coincidence, coincidence in that. John Moody a couple times flew north of Kansasville around Milwaukee and the, and the TCA from Milwaukee and, uh, and, and Waukesha Airport uh, converged right over my subdivision in my house. So for him to go between those two terminal control areas for those two airports, he flew right over my subdivision while I was doing my paper up my senior year in high school. Ah, is that right? So really? I saw him fly. Was that your first glimpse of the aircraft? That was the first glimpse. I was on. I was doing my paper out on my Schwinnbar ski 10 speed, <laughs> and he went over. I thought it was RC at first, and I thought, no way. That that's a that's a guy's butt hanging out of the <laughs> that thing. And he flew that's over. Quite a vision. <laughs> and he went back again, and I thought. And then there was a there was an article in the Milwaukee Journal. Ah, okay. And then in Popular Science or someplace. I can't remember. He may what. have been flying for media people or something at the time. Exactly. Well. Exactly. And I saw that, and and I and. That just cr created a cascade and really started the sport. Well, you know, there's an awful lot of people. Uh, I got to believe most of our viewers have at least seen this aircraft. Yeah. I don't know how many of them have seen it fly, and I'll bet almost none of them have ever actually flown one. Right. You can let, let us know, folks, if you've flown one. That'd be interesting to know. Yep. But tell me a little bit about how the aircraft operates from a pilot's point of view. Uh, uh, kind of walk me through a typical flight in a brief form. So, so really good question, and, and that, that's the, interestingly, of the people that come here and are look have the most perplexed look on their faces, <laughs> they're conventional. Sure, gig, sure. Gig. Like, what would I do with this? Yep. There's no stick. There's no rudder pedals. There's they, they often say there's no ailerons, yeah. and there's no elevator. So there's no there, there's no like elevons like some some of the flying sure, right. had. So so, yeah. quite simply, um, two things: uh, pitch control is by weight shift, forward and back. And and how do you move yourself forward and back? Well, you you actually you actually plant yourself because plant. you're seated in a seat. So does that move, or how does that work? Um, it doesn't it doesn't move it doesn't move at all. And that's actually part of the part of the that's one of its positive characteristics is that is that it's it's tacky enough that that you're you're not inclined to to move too easily. That's your stability in a way, your pitch stability. Exactly. And it is single it's place, so you're learning. This is how we taught everybody back in the early days of ultralight. Send up your student with radios and stuff, but uh, yeah. two-seater yeah. has made that a lot easier, of course, but uh, here you are in this aircraft. Yep. Okay, so, so shifting your weight forward is a subtle thing then, mm -hmm. back and forth, a matter of inches. Do you lean forward in the seat I when do. you want to really like 
I do. Your nose are down? Okay. I, I do. And, 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 and because I've been getting so many questions about it, the, the three times I've flown here at the show, I've been more acutely aware <laughs> of how much I actually do move about uh, about a foot to 16 inches. Because my people have travel. asked you these kinds of questions. So now when you're flying, you're going, not just doing it, you're thinking about I'm doing thinking, it. Oh, and going, yeah. So I guess I should. So move. 16 inches, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm taking off, I give it give it full throttle and I actually go go almost as far forward as I can. The plane on its gear is about a degree too positive, too much angle of attack. Okay. So the beauty of that is as as you're approaching um, takeoff speed, the rear wheels come off the ground. And uh, they only come off about an inch and a half or so. And then and then I know I can actually feel it because kind of, because the plane kind of wallows a little bit. Ah, okay. And then you can feel the aft gear get a little light on you. Exactly. It I just, see. It's just kind of like this, and then I and I slide I slide back and, the, and, the, and it rotates right off and climbs out. All right. So let's jump from that to um, I, I'm assuming in flight now you're cruising around or whatever. Now your mm -hmm. motions are very small. Are very they? small. In fact, like, often like an inch just, or two. So actually, I, I often just 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 move 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 my. Excuse me. Move your I, feet. I often just move one foot. Oh, really? From, from, from the. This from, is your footrest right down here. Okay. From there onto the onto the tire. Really, and, and that's that, enough to create a little bit of nose lower, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's look at the wing tips for yep. a second now. There's mm -hmm. drag rudders out there on the end yep. of the wings. Mm -hmm. Very effective out there. I mean, imagine, folks. I mean, it's way out there, so a little motion is going to do quite a bit. How do you do that part? Well, there's uh, there's these twist grips on the hang tubes here. Go ahead and move one of them for us. Well, the I regret. That they're bungee corded. Ah, okay. They're okay. bungee. They're bungee corded forward because. Okay, but how far do you have to move those? You're doing it. Right, about like that, huh? About that, like that. And that's all it takes. So I want to ask you briefly about yep. the engine here. Um, uh, you said this is adapted from powered paragliders. Correct. Which are also very light aircraft, but it's a pull start proposition. I mean, I can see your pull starter right here. Correct. Correct. It's a pull start. Very simple. It's a two-stroke motor. 100 cc's. Um, the beauty of it is it weighs 23 pounds, and with that over four-foot diameter propeller, it puts out about 125 pounds of thrust. Wow! I'm looking at your fuel tank up here. Yeah. It looks like that maybe holds a couple gallons, or maybe not even that. Not even that. It holds five quarts. Five quarts of fuel. And how long can you fly on five quarts of fuel if you're careful about it? Um, if, if I'm careful about it, it'll last an hour and a half. <laughs> so it burns, it burns, supposedly this, this engine should burn about three, three and a half quarts an hour. Three and a half, now three and a half quarts an hour, not gallons an hour, folks. Quarts. Three and a half quarts an hour. Yeah. I don't think anybody's ever told me that before. Well, yeah. that's very interesting, Eric. Uh, the aircraft is no longer, no one anywhere sells it. No. Nope. So what would you like to have happen with it then? I'd like to see it go to a museum Someplace that's hung on permanent display. Uh, you know, the museum here has some stuff like that. Mm. So, folks, if you got anything to do with your favorite museum in town, or if you run a museum, you might want to get a hold of Eric. How would we get a hold of you to, to do that? You could email me at uh, uh, T Base. That's T B A S E four eight six zero at gmail.com. All right. So there you can find out. Uh, Ask Eric some more questions. You don't hope you don't mind. There may not, be some people that will ask you some questions. Not at all. And uh, if you got a museum in mind, here's a here's an interesting example of early light aviation yep. that made quite an impact here at Oshkosh some 40 plus years ago when he first did this, I yep. guess. Yep. So that's very good, Eric. Well, thank you, Dan. You can find more about this kind of aircraft. I haven't reported or flown the Easy Riser. I know of it for my entire career, but I've never flown one. But there's lots of affordable aviation on ByDanJohnson.com. Thanks for joining Eric Walner and myself here at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh. Thanks, Dan.